Hiya, welcome back to my channel. It's Wendy here from Team Pish Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Today I'm doing another Halloween video and hopefully this time I'm going to be making a soap dish. Now, when you think of soap, you think of cleanliness. And I thought it would be really cool to make a soap dispenser, not soap dish, a soap, soap dispenser that looks as if it's full of goo. <laughs> I just thought it would be really cool. I don't know why really. <laughs> it's my sick mind. <laughs> anyway, let's see how I get on with this really creepy, horrible, disgusting soap dispenser. So this is a mould for a soap dispenser bottle. And if you haven't seen the video I made making this for the first time, I'll link it in the top right hand corner. What I'm going to do this time is turn it inside out because I'm going to colour the inside part but not the outside part. So you will be able to see the colour on the inside but you can still see through it. That's the plan anyway. So I'm using some Hemway Black Mica Powder which I've decanted into a tub because I don't like the packets. And I'm going to patchwork the inside tube. So I'm just making it patchy. This project is going to be completely disorganised and look awful. It's the first project I've put together using resin when I've actually planned for it to look bad. And that's quite bizarre. I'm now going to use some neon yellow from mmicauk.uk. And this stuff is bizarre. It's not only neon yellow, but when it's kind of got a black around it, it turns green. And I think that's just brilliant. It's perfect for Halloween, don't you think? Now, I actually bought this colour secondhand from a seller who was reducing their stock. And I absolutely love this colour. It is so bizarre. Everything I use in this video will be listed in the description box below. And don't forget, all my discount codes are on my website, which is toonpish.com. Now, I have had problems in the past with this soap dispenser and others like it, a bit collapsing in the middle. So I decided to fill it with a couple of pieces of resin that I had. Now, these are pieces of perspex or plexiglass, whatever you want to call it. They're just off cuts and I'm gluing, so I'm super gluing, I'm trying to, some bugs onto them. I ran out of the super glue so I found some more in the garage. It's not as quick but it still works. And these little bugs again will be listed in the description box below. I bought them from Amazon. They're a cheap bag of plastic bugs. So I'm going to be putting these bugs and some other pieces into the interior. The reason I put them on plexiglass is so that they don't all sink to the bottom. I'd like some near the top. Now I expect you're going to see that plexiglass through the outside, but I have a cunning plan for that. I just want to say a big hello and welcome to all my new subscribers. Thanks for joining me and if you haven't subscribed already, maybe you would consider doing so. It doesn't cost anything and it does help my channel out. And a comment is really, really appreciated. I'm going to be using J Diction 1 to 1 Crystal Clear Epoxy Resin for this. It's a medium depth resin, but I know it can pour quite deep indeed. So this is perfect for it. And yes, it will be going into my pressure pot. If you don't have a pressure pot, you don't have to use this resin. You can use a slower cure resin. It will give the resin a chance to release the bubbles. And J Diction do a 72 hour cure deep pour resin, which is perfect if you don't have a pressure pot. So 24 hours later it came out of the pressure pot and it was slightly at an angle. Now the two blocks that I'd put in the centre, one was quite jammed in there and the other one wasn't straight. So it had cured at an angle, but that's no big deal. I managed to sort that out later. So getting it out of the mould <laughs> was a little tricky but eventually I managed it. With a lot of help from isopropanol alcohol, that always helps to demold anything. Bit of an anti-climax in sound there as well, never mind. 
I actually really like the way it's come out. However, there is a mark where the mold is damaged. This was a damaged mold when I first got the mold and it's extremely annoying when things like that, you buy them new and they come through damaged. But I have a plan anyway, so it doesn't matter. This is 1200 grit wet dry sanding paper. And I'm going to sand the outside of every part. I want it to be sea glass type effect. Thank you Claire at Claire's Crafty Corner. This is inspired from one of your videos and I will put her link in the description box below. So after a little while of sanding and shaving the bottom so it is near enough flat, this is what I've got. This sea glass effect is absolutely gorgeous I think. It would work with quite a few projects. And it's now time to start putting it together. I'm going to be using BSI 5 Minute Quick Cure Epoxy Glue for this. I like it because you can control how much comes out easier by having it in two separate bottles but you need equal parts so just be mindful that you make sure it's equal parts. The good part about epoxy glue is that you can add a mica powder and I'm going to be using neon yellow which was the same yellow I used in the original and I'm going to mix the two parts together with the neon yellow. It does seem to cure a little quicker with mica in it though so bear in mind it might not have much time to work with it. So I'm only mixing a small amount at a time for each time I need to glue something I mix it up there and then. First bit I'm going to glue on is the lid and now I don't mind if this glue this yellow gooey glue squirts out everywhere. It's not going to squirt because it's actually too thick but I kind of want it to. So I'm going to encourage it to squirt out the sides so it looks like it's escaping. So I'm using far too much glue for the purpose and hopefully it will squish and ooze out the side and I can add some if it doesn't do it enough. And then I thought I'd really want it to go flowing over the edge. Oh, it's going to look disgusting and I love it. So I decided to make it drip over the edge too. Then I had a thought, why not do some blood stains on it? So I found the reddest mica that I have and this is eye candy, Buka Red. It's the best red I've found so far that is a mica powder. They are really difficult to find. They're either pink or purple or orange and I really have trouble with a solid red. Now I don't know about you but I've got sensitive skin. Resin doesn't like my skin. I do react quite badly to it so I don't like touching any kind of resin that isn't dry. So I decided to use the gloved hand and with a gloved hand I spread the red glue all over the fingers so that I could make a kind of a handprint. Now it didn't go according to plan but I used the paintbrush afterwards to fill in the gaps. I think it came out all right actually. I could have waited for it to cure a little bit so it wasn't so runny. That was the only thing. And that would have only taken a minute. But I had so much fun doing this. I've never done a handprint in resin before. It was quite fun. Then I decided to put some more goo or ooze or sticky green horrible yellow mess going down the side of it so that it looks as if it's escaping or dripping out or oozing or something really disgusting. And as I was doing that, I was thinking, you know what? if we had flies or ants on it that would just be great so i got the little ants out of the plastic bag of little bugs and we had a little ant trail and a fly on the top and i weren't going to stop there on the top i decided to put some more flies and some more ooze obviously the lid's going to have to go on this the pump lid mechanism so i wanted it to look as if it was coming out of that as well so where all the little bits are dripping over the side I gave them a kind of entry point and I decided to make it drip even more. Now by this point I'd got to grips with how quick this glue was drying and it was just so much fun. I so enjoyed this. It was late one night. You can see it's kind of dark in the picture. The shadows, it's dark, it's fun. What a great Halloween project this was. Now I can't put a nice gold shiny pump part on this jar, can I? So 
so I thought I'd better wrap that up as well. Now it's not going to be completely sanded because I do want little shiny bits to make it look as if it actually was nice and clean and sanitary the first time before it got infected, however you want to put it. So I gave it a little bit of a rough up and then decided to put some goo and ooze on it too. By this point I realised that the two-part epoxy glue could go in a silicon pot and it just peels out. I don't know why I didn't think of that to start with. And as I was getting used to how quick the glue cured, I thought I'd have it dripping off the end. Ugh. Once I was happy that I'd completely messed this up deliberately, it was time to put some hand soap inside before I put the pump on. So filling it up, I decided to use a blue rather than a green, but it worked beautifully. And the pump fits wonderfully. And now you can see the difference between the green and the yellow and it's the same colour. Very bizarre. But one's on the black and one's on the gold and that's why it looks different. See if it works. Yep, fully working. That will clean your hands. And absolutely disgusting and I love it. It's perfectly sanitary and it doesn't look like it and I think it would just be great at parties for people to wash their hands with, don't you? It was so much fun to make. I've really, really enjoyed this one. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done it already. Comments are really welcome. I always answer comments. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Come back and see me next week because you never know what I'm going to be up to. I never know what I'm going to be up to. Have a great week. Happy crafting and bye for now. Thank you.